In this video, we're going to begin tackling the start of the navigation system and uh, really putting the core gameplay elements together. And that's mainly having a system of uh, AI units move throughout the board, trying to get, well, not trying, but randomly moving across the board. Now in this video, I'm gonna take just a little bit of time to try to think about what it is we're trying to do. I have not uh, pre-recorded this video. So what you're seeing here is kind of my way of thinking through the problem. Uh, obviously, if you find that sort of thing boring, move along to the next video. So we're dealing with a level. Let's just simplify this and say there's maybe three different areas. Um, there are specific locations, and these locations are somehow linked together, right? Let's say each of these circles is a location, and they're linked in some fashion. And by link, I mean um, they are tied, meaning I can move from one node to the next, and then maybe from another node to the next node, and then maybe that node's connected to any of these. Now, I'm not gonna take a super huge amount of time to analyze Five Nights at Freddy's and try to figure it out. Um, that's not what this entire series is about. This is about my implementation and how I feel like doing it. But what I think I'm gonna end up doing is we're gonna make some sort of a, uh, a graph here, and the graph is gonna be composed of nodes, and it will be composed of nodes and connections. This is gonna be probably a bi-directional, meaning you can go back and forth in each direction. Uh, the reason for this is because um, I can't think of any reason why a character shouldn't be able to return to a room that they were at before. So in the actual game, what we're going to probably end up doing is placing game objects, uh, whether they're empty or a cube or some other object, in different locations. And those are going to become our XYZ positions in space that denote where our, our characters are going to end up actually going at the end of the day. Right? So he's going to... Uh, make a decision, and that decision during some arbitrary period of time. So we're going to need something keeping time. Uh, we already have uh, the start of that, obviously, but we do need someone, uh, the manager itself, uh, choosing somehow when everyone should update. All the AI elements should do something, right? Because not only does AI update tell the characters to move, but it also blocks out the cameras. We're going to look at the current node that an AI character would be at and look at all of the outgoing connections that AI character uh, can potentially travel down, right? So how we decide to store this, uh, I'm not you know, completely sure at the moment. We could technically store nodes and in each node store its connections. Um, we could just store edges or these nodes and uh, therefore hold references to everything? I'm, I'm not sure. Um, there's a lot of ways you can kind of handle this sort of thing. And a lot of times it gets down to optimization issues. And it's not, that's really not where we are with this game at all at the moment. But anyway, so we're going to have these. So let's just say our character is here. And this character has made a decision. So um, the update AI has decided to trigger and fire. And our character now needs to be signaled that this is going to occur. So we're most likely going to want the update AI uh, to communicate, or excuse me, time to communicate with some sort of an AI manager. And the AI manager will then look through its list of characters for that level and tell each one to make a decision. So then this character is going to have to look at uh, its node and look at uh, the available connections. And now this raises a bigger question. So in Five Nights at Freddy's, uh, what is it? Yeah, you, you kind of the the map itself is sort of broken up. So you got the security room here, and you got the big room over here, and you got the subsections here and here. But for the most part, I believe what is it? Chica uh, has a preferred path, and that preferred path is coming down and around and kind of coming at you from this angle. And of course, the other animatronic has a different preferred path coming down and around in the other way, and. Uh, you know, yet, yet again, another animatronic will have, you know, some uh, more random path. And of course, what is there? There's Foxy, who has their whole, um, you know, running at you as fast as possible, trying to get to you through the door. So while there is a common thread with how the nodes are linked, what connections that are available changes based upon the character. That is, Chica doesn't necessarily need to know how this side of the room is connected over here, because Chica is not allowed to go over there. And once again, we could handle this a few different ways. Uh, if we wanted to sort of, um, we could have the node itself carry information like whether or not a character is allowed to go in that direction. 
Um, what I would probably prefer doing, though, at least in this initial implementation, is uh, to give each character their own linked layout. So each character gets a, a linkage uh, between the nodes. And what that means is a link would probably be something along the lines of, you know, N1 is connected to node 2. Given this, uh, I might need some different things here. I might need like a dictionary so that I could quickly look up. Um, if I have a particular node I'm on, I'm going to want to convert that node into a set of links between these nodes and it would return to me a list of those things for that character. So if the character is at a node, let's say the character is at node one, um, the character needs to query other available nodes. Now we can do this through some sort of a manager, or if we want to create a data structure, this node could have a link to all possible, that is, it could have a reference to an array of links. That's the wrong way to do it. It could have a reference to the start point of all links coming out of it. Now the links themselves may be defined per character, uh, or they could potentially store what characters are allowed to travel down those routes. But then again, the links then are now dependent upon um, being updated with how many characters are in the scene. So that's, that's not something I particularly like. So just, just starting over again, we're going to have nodes in the scene. And it will be, you know, at, at minimum, it, it, it will be a transform array, right? It doesn't have to be transforms. It could be game objects, but it will be an array of nodes. Now these nodes have connections. The reality of this game though is, if I remember correctly, sometimes the characters do some funny things, uh, meaning they can all of a sudden hop way, 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 way far ahead to a room that doesn't make any sense. So that is they'll go from the A to the C of it, but skip B. And if we did a system where each character had its own internal linkage linkages between the nodes, that is each character defines how the rooms are set up itself, this would be easy to do. Now, if instead we want to define these links like this, so A, uh, B, C, maybe something like that. So the time manager, it invokes a method in the AI manager. And this method is something along the lines of just update characters. Update characters iterates through my array of characters, so C1, C2, C3, and says, you know, dot make path decision, whatever I want to call this. Update path decision is going to, so the character is going to know the node it's already on. I'm going to assume that we're going to store this in the character's information. It now needs to, needs to be able to query for links. Now, if the character, now querying for links could be through some sort of another manager, or it could be internal to that particular character. For right now, for some reason, I feel like it being internal to the character makes more sense with having different routes. There, there's so many ways we could handle this. We could make it so that every character has the, um, the same linkages, but those linkages are weighted, right? So each linkage has a weight associated with it for that particular character. So the weight for Bonnie in this case might be 0.0, .0 here, meaning Bonnie should not be able to go there. And you would multiply the weight by um, whatever. This becomes more or less like, like uh, a bias. And then you might have some sort of a likelihood parameter of it being uh, targeted. If it's internal to the character, that is the character defines its own linkages between the nodes. So what are we gonna need for that? Well, for each node, an array, of valid nodes, or we need a dictionary with, that will take the, uh, the node we're on and return to us uh, valid links. So I'm trying to think about setting this up in the editor in, in it and what would happen. So the, the pipeline for something like this would be we select Bonnie, the, the Bonnie character. We already have our nodes in the scene. We would click on two nodes and we would create our own editor GUI and it would then generate a link and store that information for us between those two nodes. And what would happen is we'd have an internal dictionary. We would have to see if the node exists as a key. And uh, what we would do is we would have a, uh, a list or an array of some sort and we would add it if that key exists. Now we would need to do that for both nodes because this is a bi-directional type system. 
with this way of handling things, I'm going to need to now think about how I would implement this in the editor um, to set up the systems. Now, of course, this could be hard coded if we want to, but creating tools in the editor is something I don't get a whole lot of experience doing. So it might be a, an interesting challenge to do that. So therefore, we're going to need to deal with selection in the editor, how we grab objects. Uh, we're going to need some sort of a, a GUI interface uh, in, the, in, in the editor. And that is going to take the selection, uh, buff, create a link, and then that data is going to need to be stored afterwards. And then we're probably going to want a graphical, you know, line or segment indicating what we just did that we can, that is live in the editor. I've kind of got a grasp on uh, what I think I'm going to do for this. This can, always, of course, always change. Um, I might go to bed tonight and think of a whole different way of handling this problem, creating character specific linkages between set nodes within the system just make it so that nodes are technically not this global phenomenon and every character has their own nodal network that that's another way of doing it and then making their individual connections but uh yeah i think i like the global node um local uh linkage system at the moment or you know what i could do is uh, each character could store a dictionary. Um, so if we make both the nodes global and the links global, what we could have is a dictionary of linkages. Um, and the idea here is you would use, you'd have a manager. So hold on, let's read. Okay, so the way we could do this is if we wanted a, uh, a nodal global scenario and a linkage global scenario, um, but we have weights that are local to each character. We would of course have the, the global linkage and, and this would be through the AI manager we would be accessing this. Or if not the AI manager, you know, the, the nodal manager that we would end up creating. You, we would pass into this dot get links and we would pass into it the node that we're currently at. This would in turn return to us an array of links, global links, mind you, not specific to the character. We would then iterate over each of these links, and uh, we internally would hold a wait for each link. Now, this would be set up by us beforehand, but the idea is um, you would use that dictionary, you would pass in the key, which would be, you know, L1, and this would return to you the wait for that object. So if the wait was, you know, 0.0, .0 you can't go down that path. If the wait was 0.1, this becomes the probability of us taking that path. Uh, now, given this, I'm trying to think of problems with this. If we're considering this to be probability, uh, using a term like 0 0.1 means that all links coming out of an area would have to have, um, well, should have a probability uh, summation equal to 1.0, right? So if this one's 0, 0.0 and this one's 0, 0.0, this one would have to be 1. And I'm trying to think if that would get us in trouble. Not that I have to follow this stochastic crap, but um, usually doing that uh, helps you out later on when you're trying to deal with things. So if we did have a system and we did something like this, we would say, let's say this is Bonnie and Bonnie has no ability to go out of here. Therefore, Bonnie's only choice would be to leave. Now, we're not dealing with, with the choice of staying, and I don't think that is a valid choice at all. So there will be no staying. They'll just be moving. Um, well, that is to say we couldn't create a link to itself, and that link would then um, get half credit. You know, uh, that is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 if we wanted this to be equal. Okay, so link to link. We can supply a weight. I guess if no weight supplied, we would divide all equally. Um, but let's just assume that links have to be supplied. So, okay, a link is supplied. So that means what I would like in the inspector is a way to uh, select the link. Now, I'm trying to think. This means, does this mean what I think it means? So if I had two links like this, right? And this one is like this. But this one is like this with multiple outputs, right? The link in is 100%. However, the link out is certainly not 100%. This output is, you know, one, two, three, four, uh, you know, tw uh, 25%. That means the each, each link would have to then be broken into two, meaning that the weight of one link could change based upon the direction that you're, you're going. So this becomes unidirectional at that point. 
without getting too deep into this, what I think I'm going to do, just so that we can get some code down and make something happen, is I'm going to treat the weights uh, not as weights at the moment, but simply as uh, binary on and off states. So, um, you know, it's zero or one. Uh, zero meaning you can't go down that path, one meaning you can go down that path. And I can, of course, just take all active paths and um, that becomes the potential. I, I'll split the probability equally between all paths. And if we ever want to, we can come back here, modify this so that they are weights, make this a, a unidirectional system where weights are different possibly from one node to the next. All right, everyone, I think I bored you enough with this video. Um, you know, I hope some of you found it actually somewhat interesting to kind of walk through this and figure out how um, this might be dealt with. But in the next video, we'll jump in and start implementing this. Thanks, everyone. So long.